Divine Truth Interviews. Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. This is the second part of the interview, Identity and Self-Belief, where Jesus and Mary are visited and interviewed by Vice Journalist and Editor Julian Morgans about their identity and self-belief. But brief discussions of topics such as honesty, emotions, courage, life, self-knowledge, self-confidence and death are also included. The interview was recorded on 22nd of September 2017 from 1.10 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Mary, what's, can you sort of guide me through, through your own journey? For my journey? Mm. Sure. I have to say, and it's great listening to your story, that Jesus, or if you like AJ, you know, when he first started having memories, is a lot more emotionally brave than me personally, and that has affected my journey a lot. Mm. Um, but I have similar experience in that in my growing up years, especially in my teenage years, I had two or three kind of, I probably would have called them episodes of like intense emotion attached to things that like, so when we talk about memories, we're really talking about an emotional experience mm. you know so like if you remember the death of your friend you feel like a bit like ashamed or a bit like uncomfortable and probably a bit sad or, or whatever you feel like so that's your memory has an emotional content mm. so for me growing up I had two or three episodes of like this intense emotional overwhelm that I could not relate to anything that was going on in my life right then or had happened in my life afterwards like intense grief and loss like like loss somehow it was like yeah such an immense um experience that one and then other ones about being harmed you know sexually mm. and it was like whoa what, what's mm. this is all like and i just kind of i wasn't very emotionally brave in general i didn't feel very much my family is very shut down towards emotions and very much about like if you're having an emotion, we all have to feel that emotion. And if you're having an emotion that's freaking us out emotionally, you've got to stop having that emotion. And so, sure. you know, so I had a lot of shutdown. Sure. So you weren't, it wasn't the kind of family where you'd talk sex and politics and feelings at the dinner table. Well, some talk, discussions no, were allowed. Talk, you would talk about. And some weren't. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. not sex with my mum, definitely with my dad. But definitely, like, my parents probably on the outside, people would say, well, they're pretty open characters, you know especially my dad, like he'll talk about, he loved Jesus when he first met him because he was like, yeah, this guy talks about all this stuff. But when it comes to emotion, no, like you've got to be happy, Mary. <laughs> you know, that was my job. And Dads are often and, bad at that stuff. Yes. <laughs> and my mum's even worse, like right. really yeah. intense. She's intensely terrified person. Yeah. And so anyone who like ruffles her right, right. comfort zone yeah. gets a lot of, Exactly. She gets pretty nasty, like in yeah. a sort of seething way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I didn't feel a lot. I was always attracted to this sort of, you know, I, stu I studied a third of my degree with psychology. I ended up working in mental health for about eight years. Well, um, yep. Yeah. It was interesting. When I met Jesus, it was like there's a lot of stuff. She was for expecting me to, to see another Jesus from her. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, not really, <laughs> not there. really. Um, but, but. When it came to, you know, looking at my own identity, I had a lot of... Um, Anti-looking even. Well, yeah, a lot of anti, a lot of, lot of ideas about that it did make me crazy. Yeah. You know, mm. fully, like, psychotic. You know, that's my experience. So you, think you did worry that you were crazy? Yeah, I'd say I went through periods where I really did worry. Not psychotic, because I know what psychotic is, but and you've that had plenty of experience. With. I've had plenty of experience <laughs> with people who are genuinely psychotic, mm. and I knew that I knew what day it was, and I could take care yeah, of myself, sure. and yeah. that I wasn't like you know having problems ordering my thoughts or anything. But I certainly felt like I went through periods of like is there something psychologically cracked about me, you know, that is not healthy or not... Um... You also looked a lot at, do I want to be this person, didn't you? Well, yeah. Because I, so I, I definitely really, didn't want to. <laughs> I was really concerned that somehow I had some kind of deep emotional investment 
Oh, don't we get ahead of you? Yeah, I'm getting ahead. So, okay, so that was that was that, that was that. Yeah, All that happened nice. before, mm. and then I had like about a decade of just going off and getting education and working and traveling and all of these kinds of things. Living overseas for long periods. Yep. Some relationships. So yeah, two kind of serious relationships, and just when um, I met Jesus again, I'd just flown home. I'd just been living. You know, I'd been really pursuing. I was partway through a master's in international aid and development. I was kind of had a direction. Um, and just come out of kind of a serious relationship. And I came home in my parents' living room and here's this guy. And I was really interested in what he was talking about. Do but you remember your first impression? You walked through the door. My first Did I want to say honestly? My first impression, <laughs> honestly, I'd heard from my dad that there's this guy, you know, we've been listening to and he thinks he's Jesus. And, but, you know, he says some interesting things and all this kind of thing. I honestly expected like this middle-aged, kind of a bit overweight, yeah, right, aging hippie yeah. kind of, yeah. who was it's sort of full of himself, and, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I remember he coming out and sitting down, and going, "Wow, yeah, he's a lot better looking than I imagined." <laughs> and, um, and I certainly wasn't shopping for a relationship. And also, he's very unassuming. Mm. is what I felt and just very natural and like mm. kind of relaxed and ordinary mm. and then so he started he gave his presentation but I was pretty distracted by stuff and then um I was kind of like on to like how did it happen I wanted to sort of pin me down yeah maybe that happened a bit afterwards but I was like mm, what is this guy's deal and then about a month later, I think it was, my parents actually sat me down and I was going through this whole other emotional process in this period of like, will I go back to Lebanon? Will I stay here? Will I continue my studies? Right, What's that's a on? career end decision. Yeah, and, and I just <clears throat> come out of this relationship. So I was totally sort of still romantically attached to this other guy. How old were you at this time? 28. 29. 28, just turned 29, right about now. Mm. Um, yep. And then my parents, I sort of was making this decision about Lebanon and they sat me down and said, look, just so you know, we've heard this thing um, that that AJ guy thinks that you're his soulmate. And um, the first words out of my mouth were, I knew it. And then I literally sat there and went, where did that come from? Like, I don't know that. What, that's freaking, that was just How freaking. did your parents respond when you that, said I knew it? They did this very similar thing to me, just like looked at me like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, that's shocking to all of us. Yeah. Um, and then I immediately started into this thing of like, I don't, guys, I'm sure he says that about heaps of girls. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm sure it's not true. I don't think it's true. I don't know why I just said that. And they were like, well, I think he thinks it's fairly true. You know, like, I don't think he's going to change his mind. And then we promptly kind of ended the conversation. And I just thought... In, I tried to think, like, whatever, I'm getting back to my other decision-making tree, you know. And, but that, it triggered a very strange thing in me where, for like, two days and two nights, I, I just was, like, I don't know. I don't know if it was, like, a shock kind of thing, a preoccupation where I was, like, I can't. Why is that? Why am I still thinking about that? I don't need to think about that. Why am I thinking about that? And I did not, I, I really didn't eat anything for two whole days. And I just sort of kept trying to get away from my family and sit in their backyard and just like look at a tree or something and go, what is going on with me? This has had an impact and I don't get why. Like, I don't care about that spiritual stuff at this moment, you know. Right. And anyway, um, and this guy didn't even talk to me. What? What? You know, like he was really shy. He, you guys didn't talk much even that first night? living room no 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 he really was sh very shy i knew who quiet. she was as soon as i met her but right but i was having my own full-on feelings about meeting her because i'd been I, i've been going for five years by now wanting to meet her right so it's almost like now that i've met her what do i do <laughs> you know what i mean like and i've always been quite shy around women so and I didn't want to, I, I could see Mary was going through a lot of sadness about giving up her life from Lebanon and about her previous relationship. Yeah. And I didn't want to burden her with this 
way out there thing either, you know, yeah. that, that, you know, uh, saying, oh, I'm your soulmate, you know, whatever. I didn't even want to put, I didn't want to put any pressure on her at all or, or make her feel like she had to do anything just because she knew that or anything. You, I think so, you said to me after the fact, you thought, great, I know who she is, that's a relief, but it's going to be a long time before we have anything to do with each other because she's totally engrossed in her other thing yeah. and she's got to kind of come to it herself. Anyway, and I didn't want to influence her to come to it either because I felt that needed to be, like I had to go through a process, I needed to let Mary go through a process. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're very kind and respectful. But So I heard, I heard this from my parents. I found it very hard to let go of. Like it was just, um, and I did not understand why because I hadn't consciously had an attraction. Like mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, he's, he looks better than I thought he was going to. Yeah, but, sure. You know, I didn't really feel like, whoa or anything or you know and i was still kind of engrossed with the other fellow and um and also i felt like you know i kind of finally got my life i know my direction mm. why do i give a you know why do i care about this I, it doesn't I, so i went on and on about this and then i did this whole thing of like i'm gonna figure out what this guy is all about mm -hmm. so you know i spent a couple of weeks like looking at all the things he'd written looking at the website and what is this what is this I tried to go on a date with another guy to, you know, just like, I don't know, get. And anyway, yeah. about a month later in February, I also was really indignant. I'm like, this person thinks that this is something significant about me and they don't, they're not even talking to me about yeah, it. Yeah, that's like, right. Why did, why, why did my parents know and not me? And so. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's, that's pretty typical me. But I understand. Well, I didn't tell your parents either. But, yeah. No, but anyway, <laughs> that's another whole, we could go on for a long time. but. Yeah. Um, so in the end, I emailed him and I said, because you were overseas by this stage. And I, I was said, in America, well, actually. I've, yeah. I've heard something about what you think about me, but I'd like to hear it from you. You know, <laughs> the end. That was all. So I got this very terse <laughs> two line. Where, where are we now? This is February of 2000. It's actually Valentine's Day. Hey. <laughs> Completely <laughs> by accident. I'm not a romantic. Yeah, yeah you know? completely by accident. Uh, that was 2009 uh 2009 I yes think. february yeah. 2009 february 2009 yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh we started an email exchange and i had ve 2008 Sorry? yeah sorry february 2008 okay yeah yeah so uh, so we started an email exchange in which jesus <laughs> told me like what he because i asked now he told me everything he thought not specifically so, about so I got a two-liner and yeah. she got a ten-pager <laughs> type of thing. Okay. Yeah. But it was way out there, of course, because yeah. yeah. I'm saying what I, you know, what And I returning remember. to Earth and all of this stuff, and I was just like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not into it. <laughs> no. Uh, but completely emotionally churned up, completely in a way that I couldn't understand. Um, and... So this went on for a couple of months, really, didn't it? Until eventually, again, it was me. I was like, well, now I'm starting to feel attracted to this person. And I'm very, the truth, the the idea of being completely emotionally truthful mm. and finding truth and all of this thing, this all appeals to me. I'm going to go and see this guy and I'm going to, you know, have a face to face. So, but you were, by, you were in England by that time. Mm and not coming home for months. Mm -hmm. And so I flew to England um, to sort it out. I fully expecting, honestly, to go and maybe like, sounds very shallow, but maybe like even have a fling with this person who I didn't really think was particularly, I thought he's a lovely person. Mm. But he's wrong about this Jesus thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, but you yeah. wanted to find out. Yeah, and I wanted to face to face, and by then, you know, I wanted action. <laughs> oh God, I can't remember that. But anyway, <laughs> I, you know, I wanted to. I, I felt romantically interested. Yeah, at this of point. course. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, anyway, so but but with the gen general concept that you'd be able to change my mind. Yeah, basically, to sort of very arrogantly sort of felt like, well, I'll sort this guy. So out. I've been yeah. through a eleven year process, or more than that now, fifteen, nearly fifteen year process, and Mary now thought she was going. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Change right. mind, he's right. nice but misguided. Anyway, yeah. so we get there, I get there, and within two days I have another one of these kind of episodes that I had in my teenage years. Yeah. 
out of the blue, like honestly, making breakfast and just all of a sudden overwhelmed. And suddenly like that is that same loss of a person feeling. Just a feeling of loss. That's how you describe yeah, it. Intensely sobbing. Yeah, it was a lot more than that because she Mary was... <laughs> But then I got very angry. Pretty angry with me about that I wasn't the same person anymore and I didn't look the same and I wasn't acting the same way and, like, she just, she just so went she, off. So it was a feeling of loss but coupled with a very definite idea about who you'd lost and yes. what they looked like. Yeah, and yeah. everything, yeah. And, 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 and again... Um, and that I was the same person but I didn't look the same and... Yeah, all, all this, this kind of stuff. stuff. <laughs> so that went on for maybe, like, an hour... Um, and then I did the same thing as I did after I said, oh, I knew it to my parents. I went, that's just ridiculous. That's not anything real. Um, right. And we basically, it, things got worse and worse between us until I went home. And I said, I'm not seeing you again, you know. Um, and then it was like, uh, my parents by this stage were really putting the weights on me as well to sort of. To break it off. Yeah. They, so they knew you'd gone to the UK. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they knew about, I shared with them this intense emotional experience that I'd had. And, and so in the period of a couple of weeks, or was it a month, when we were still together, I'd kind of go back and forth where I'd be like, no, that happened. And that's really like this other thing that happened, but no, it can't be real. And so I went back and, and forth. And then you'd have times when you wanted to talk to me about it. And then. Yeah. Oh, and it happened once more, didn't it? About yeah. shame. You know, I got really, really upset about feeling ashamed. And anyway. Yeah. And then you had that another meltdown about that. Yeah. So because I wasn't very emotionally brave, usually my emotional outburst would follow with a lot of rage, which was to try and get myself back under control, mm. you know, and, and you really shut up, go away. No. I was very frightened. Just came home eight months, went back to work, worked at the hospital in Brisbane. Mm. Um, but the same thing, just Jesus was completely respectful. He did not contact me, no, nothing. Um, but I couldn't, uh, let this thing, it's kind of like the thing that happened when my, first my parents told me what he thought, this feeling of like, no, you, there's, you got to investigate. There's something you're not facing in yourself is basically mm. how I ended up feeling. I'm not facing something in myself. I'm not facing something in myself. Mm. And so I would say over the, so how many years ago was that? I, I, well, that was 2008, right? most yeah. of 2008. Most of, so, and then by the end of 2009, we ended up. 2000, the end of 2008, it would have been. Oh, so end of yeah. 2008, start, no, 2009, March, I came here. That's right. I finished yeah. my job. Yeah. So that's the start of a very tenuous relationship between us where yeah. we've actually come in and out of being in it like we've been in a relationship that whole time but we've i've but frequently lived apart for right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. long periods of time yeah. sometimes yeah 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 um, because i've so mary would basically finish up having the same response every time she had one of these emotions she'd get pretty freaked out and and then she'd want to run away so she'd run Which away. let me do. So I'd say, you can go, it's okay. You know, like, so she'd run away and sometimes run away for six months or, or, or three months or whatever. And then, and then she'd want to come back. So, so we went through that for, well, up until probably last year or the mm. year before last. So, and uh, you know, and from the beginning, I set very clear parameters of, I don't want you to talk about anything you think that you remember from the first century or from our spirit life. If I'm going to feel anything, it's going to come from me. I, you know, I, I don't. I wanted no risk of suggestion okay. or anything. Sure, sure. Mm. And you respected that for a number of years until it was like almost to the point of just being controlling and bossy. Mm. Um, well, you wouldn't let me have my experience yeah. then. So after that, I thought, no. Well, now it's getting out of hand because you're not letting me have my memories now. Sure. So the first suggestion that you were Mary Magdalene came came from Jesus in the first email. When you sent your couple of lines? Well, it came no. from yeah. my parents. Okay, right. Yes. Okay, so it wasn't just this guy thinks he's your soulmate. It is. He thinks. Yeah, yeah. That you are this person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and even over, so over this period of time now, since that time, I've continued to have memories and uh very strong feelings and emotions about certain events, but also about 
about you, about um, also my feelings for God and what I want to do, which haven't come from my family background at all because my parents are both kind of very anti-God and that's not a word that was ever used. Those things have really connected me to to myself in a very kind of real way. Yeah. Um, because I've had so much emotional shutdown and suppression of myself all my life, sometimes feeling some of these emotions has made me feel like more connected and more able. If you look at a video from eight years ago of me, you'll see that I, I was not uh, particularly articulate or sure. out, outgoing person. But anyway, um, I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but. It's only through, this is why I say that he's more emotionally brave than I because most of the time I've just tried to figure out how it can't be true <laughs> and I've tried to figure out, am I harboring some out, kind yeah. of deep, unfelt, emotional, like, um, investment in this being true? Right. Like, I've tried to find a reason for me to know that it's not true. Oh, it's just because I really want attention or it's just because I'm really in love with him and I just want him and I think that's the only way I can have it. And none of those things are actually true about me, <laughs> especially before when we first met, you know. I wanted this other guy and also I wanted other guys who were more accepted by society. Yeah, That's been the biggest hurdle for me is the way that society views us and treats us. For me, that's... It specifically treats me, firstly, that was... Yes, case, yeah. because you, because I wasn't being open about it or or sharing my experience, so you just copped that. And, and I'm commonly portrayed as someone who's been manipulated by you and brainwashed by you and all these kind of things, and that's certainly not my nature, but in a way, for a long time, I was sadly kind of... I didn't want to face the flack, you know. I didn't want to face people just um, calling me crazy and stuff like that. Why is acceptance, public acceptance, important to you? Well, that has a lot to do with uh, memories, you know, of being not publicly accepted and, and violence, violent death. Mm. Um, and my own death um, in the first century was very violent as well. Um, and so I have a lot of feelings when uh, that when I really embrace who I am, that's when you'll be killed, I'll be killed. <laughs> it's all very... Um, so I feel like public acceptance is, is the way to avoid that. And in a way, I feel, I feel more comfortable because people don't take it seriously. I think mm. if people did take it seriously, I'd be even more terrified than I am now. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Is it is is there a de desire to be liked as well, though? You just want to be accepted and liked by the community. Mary Moore has a desire to 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 not be disliked. Yeah, it's that's sort of exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, it's you more... know, I I don't need you to like think I'm awesome mm. and just like look up to me and think I'm amazing, but you not liking me then like if i felt from you this sort of strong kind of undercurrent of dislike dislike then, then i start to feel insecure like yeah and i well, work yeah. hard and, yeah. and mary feels unsafe when she's yeah. like in someone in the company of someone like that i do mm. to the and, and frequently we are in the company of people who dislike me so in particular yes and so um how are you feeling that situation jesus um I still have some fear to work through, probably, about it. Um, but I've always had a feeling that, no, the truth is important to me and I'm, I'm, I'm saying the truth and I, and I don't dislike the person, you know. I like the person. I'm saying the truth. I'm not trying to hurt them in any way. I know my intentions are right. So my feelings are, no, I'm just going to stick by the truth I've said. Um, you, you have more of a feeling of um, and if I principles die, I are die. important, yeah. you know, and it, it's so important to be truthful at all times. And while I agree with that, there's times where I just go, you know, that's how I want to sort of feel. But just to finish, your question is about self-belief. Mm. I feel that over this period what I've had to do is to basically... Um, come to terms with the fact 
that there is mounting evidence for me and my own experience that this is the truth. And I do feel comfortable to say, yes, this is the truth and this is what I believe about myself. Yep. But I feel that Jesus is far more... Um, It's like I begrudgingly accept it about myself, <laughs> whereas you kind lot, of feel well, more went, relaxed. I did go that. through a lot of begrudgingly accepting initially. Yeah. Obviously, for years, you know that that took me years to get through that feeling. I suppose Mary's difficulty has been because of the emotional shutdown of her family. See, my family didn't shut me down emotionally. They didn't encourage my emotions either. They were just sort of neutral about emotion. I suppose you could say. In other words, they didn't care if I felt it or not felt it. If, of course, when I started feeling about the emotions I started feeling about being Jesus, they got concerned. But, um, but I did not have a feeling that I wouldn't be able to cope with my emotions. I, I always believed that I would be able to mm. and, and not go suicidal or something like that, right? Mm. Whereas, Whereas Mary's family is very much like if you're crying, let's hug it out of you or, you know, she yeah. should suppress you down. Like you can't handle a lot of emotion. We can't, you can't, right, right. you know. Yeah. And so um, that's why I feel my progress is as is much slower. I don't see. I don't, see. I don't sort of see it as slow. That's. I feel that's Mary's judgment. I did have a period of eight years, <laughs> mm. which is a similar period to what Mary's going through now, and um, where I had to go through all of those same things. So it's it's also unique, isn't it? Because you kind of went through this process and then you then you it made sense to you you got a context at the end of it no well, that's not or, strictly i had a period of time where i went through out. a process yeah and then i sort of gave up getting a context at the of end of what it. it all meant and then about a year after that i did get a context yes unfortunately is how i felt at the time right and um, for you it's, it's more like come and i wasn't going to share with you my feelings because i felt that in the end mary yeah. probably needed to go through a similar experience is what i felt um, but other people heard that I, you know, they asked me why all of a sudden I'd changed because I did change. And, and I changed mostly because I knew who she was now. Mm. So it felt real good uh, good for me to know who she was. Mm. And, and I stopped having the conversations with other people about, I wonder who she was as well. And some people noticed that, of yes. course. And then they go, what's up with you? Why are you no longer talking about Mary and, mm. you know, what, what's going on with you. Mm. And then and eventually I disclosed to them that, oh, well, I, I feel I'm, I've met Mary, so I know who she is now. Like, yes. And, and that's how it ended up coming to, to That's how it ended up coming to Mary's parents' ears, that they told somebody else and told somebody else. Ah, so, uh, okay, right. Yes. Okay, that makes so sense. in the end, yeah. you know, my context, and in some ways it's it's interesting because, you know, that concept, I still often resist this idea of, well, um, especially in the being, you believe in Mary Magdalene. No, I'm just having this experience. There's this other context that seems to make sense in that, you know, you've gone through a process, you know who you are. I have a lot of feelings about you. So, but I didn't, didn't go, oh, this means I'm Mary Magdalene because I had no real sense or beliefs mm. about Jesus and Mary Magdalene, you know. It was just, it's all been based on an emotional process for me and the context is the context. And I suppose I have strong feelings about certain things that happened with us in the first century and teaching things in the first century and a strong um, belief and relationship with God in the first century and that all you have had a lot of, who You've I had am. a lot of first century memories and some spirit world memories. Yes. But in each case, Mary has, when I say a lot, she's had a lot of them. But in each case, for Mary, it's like a huge trauma mm. to even... Yeah. Like it was for me at the beginning too, mm. to be honest. It's like this huge trauma to even contemplate it. Does that make sense? And it took me, like I said, a lot of years in, in the end, you know, thir 13 years, pretty close to, mm. to come to terms with you know, the whole process of just accepting it. Um, yeah. But but for Mary, I don't know if you've finished the process I of haven't. accepting it. No, um, it's an emotional acceptance that I haven't completed. Yeah. And it's interesting because the publicness of it, 
um, just occurred through my association with Jesus, you know, so it, I never actually had to face, you know, that's why I still get nervous talking about it now because it's like I'm kind of now owning it and saying it publicly to you. Mm. But for most people that we know, I just sort of showed up, they went, oh, that's her, you know, you, and... Mm. For a long time, I kind of resented that as well. I'm like, well, hang on. And, and blame me <laughs> you know, for it, actually, yeah. too. But no, yeah, I'm just having imagine. an experience yeah. that I'm trying to sort out. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I'm being forced to do it in public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Well, it's sort of public. It's like we still have a lot of private life. We but, do. But, but, the, but it is public in a sense. So, well, in the end, it's some part of it's your own fault, too, because you wanted to get up there. As, I'm a bit tenacious <laughs> Mary, as well. Mary has also this tenacity for truth uh, as well. So... It's sort of like, no, I'm going to do it like type of thing, like yeah. this yeah. this bravery and that after the fact that you that often I regret. <laughs> regret. Often, <yeah. laughs> right. <laughs> like right. Like the yeah. first email, you know, like yes. yeah. tell yeah. me. And yeah, then good. Told me. Yeah. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. And the email that changed it all. It feels to me like there was a period, especially around 2013, 14, maybe, where you guys were in the news a lot. You guys were in the media all mm. the time. Yeah, it started 2012 yeah. and went into 2013. Mm. Um, and overseas that just, it went into 2014 so it's sort, of, sort like, of started with a, a newsprint journalist wasn't it a courier mail guy because there was people who were at that time a lot of people relocated to here and they've since left because I think that's what happened with the media as well is like oh this big story there's a new cult and everything and and then you know people investigate and then they go oh yeah, it's not really that sensational, you know. Who are the Who are the people that originally came here and left? Um, Certain. When you say originally, it's like I've been here for. You we you we were here for a long time before. It was then. almost driven by the media, to be yeah. frank. That's yeah. Like sort of. Like, I mean, I, I also find it really interesting because we were talking earlier about how some years you travel heaps and some years you travel yeah. less. Yeah. So I, I think it's really interesting. That there's this idea of of. I mean, it's almost the nature of I don't know, the internet or the nature of yeah. interest. Yeah. Do you think that in some ways you guys have, have also seen that in exactly the same? Is it like, yeah, was there a sort of peak of, of, of interest in what you're doing? And has it, has it changed? Um, I, I don't feel it started yet, to be frank. But um, I feel initially what happens is when somebody... What what happened in two thousand twelve? If we can just go through that, maybe a bit is yeah. is that um, one guy who was a religious minister decided he wanted to interview me. So I said, "Yeah, sure, come along and we'll have an interview." He didn't tell me at the time that he was involved with any television station or anything like that. He just wanted to interview me. Mm. But it, after a couple of interviews, he decided that he wanted to sell his interviews to a television station. I think it was Channel Seven. Mm. I, I think he actually tried channel a few channels, channel seven, channel ten, channel nine, but eventually channel seven, seven, I think, took him up. And so then they came back, and he stayed with us for a couple of days and so forth. But the story wasn't, you know, he was angry about me saying that I'm Jesus because he's a minister, of course. So you know, he's, and he lives locally, or no, no, he lives down somewhere near Sydney, I think. Okay, I'm not right. sure exactly where he does live, but I think so. he did yes, say yes. where he did live. But it, and it he was, he got onto you just because. Oh, he never explained. Great point. Uh, probably some. Uh, he well, I think he claims to be a, like a cult investigator. You know, he, yeah. yeah he, he never really explained that clearly, but I don't know. I don't we're know. pretty open in terms of if somebody wants to come and have a chat, we'll have a chat, sort of thing. Anyway, um, in the end, they brought along a TV, you know, a cameraman and a sound producer, man and so forth, and yeah. and a producer and um, and you know. Um, we we did like days and days of interviews with them that are all recorded that they agreed to give me a copy of, which of course they never did. Some of them we got. No, we only got the recordings we made. They also made a whole heap of other recordings, mm. and we never they they were meant. The part of the agreement was that they'd give us a copy, and they never did. Sure. But but the um, interesting thing was that. Um, we had a lot of very interesting conversations and if those conversations ever went to air it would have been a very interesting experience actually mm. because it was about a lot of it was about christian religious faith and its accuracy and its relationship to the bible and the bible's accuracy and 
and whether the Bible accurately portrays our life and all these other interesting issues, which which would have, I think, the majority of people probably would have found quite fascinating. Mm. But it all made too much logical sense for them to continue with it, of course. So all they were looking for was a 10-second 10 10 slice time slice that basically said, are you saying you're Jesus and me saying yes, basically. Yeah. That's the juicy bit. Mm. That's it's the, the bit. money shot. Yeah, that's the money shot. As the, as you probably know, being in the media, that's how they refer to it as. And um, and that money shot basically meant that now what they did with that is they took that 10 second or a few minutes of our recording. They took a couple of minutes of our oh. recording, a little bit of Mary's as well. Put it together with the rest of the 18 minutes, which was all about like basically debunking that, you know, like so spending all of this time Trying well, to they find said we had a compound. Didn't having they? a compound, they so they actually fabricated a huge amount of false information. Was it this property? Yeah, mm. yeah, it was this property. And this studio wasn't in. This here. studio wasn't built. Um, yeah, it was just, it the, was little just the house, there. the little house next door, which is a two-bedroom house. And that shed wasn't built either. It was just no, a tiny it was just little... a house and a shed. Yeah, right. Um, and very it, the inside of the house wasn't cleaned up either, so it was very untidy. Mm. Um, we've done it up. Since we've done then. it up since, yeah. and and uh, you know it was it was very basic, you know, and nobody was here, nobody else other than Mary have ever, ever uh, and I have ever lived here for uh, a long period of time. Courtney and Jody might have been staying. Courtney, our next door neighbour, stayed here while he was building his yeah. um, shed shed next door to live yeah. in. Um, but you know, so from that, nobody's really ever stayed here for a very long period of time ever. You know, we've had visitors, of course, like mm. anybody does. But uh, they decided that they would go out and take photographs of fences that have got barbed wire and call it a compound. And they, but the, those fences don't even exist on our property, of course. And they'd go out and take in the prop uh, pictures of other properties and call that our property mm. and that we'd been given this property by people, you know, like a 600-acre property, which we don't actually own, um, you know, and so forth and so forth, and, and just fabricate a whole heap of lies, right? Mm. Now... Of course, this was during a time when Mary's feeling quite stressed out about even talking to anybody yeah. Yeah. about it as well. So that I was um, pretty freaked out. So Mary was pretty freaked out about the whole thing. And then after, you know, of course, they're portraying us as if we're ripping off people and taking all this money in and having an opulent lifestyle and whatever else. And we had this cult and compound and everybody who was, we, we were, you know, like the normal cult where everyone was controlled and all this mm. kind of stuff. And, and of course, there's nobody here, of course, but um, but that's what they were saying. And they fabricate all this information, which is now out there in the world, believed to be true, of course. But um, and we, we don't have the funds or anything to go and take in the court or anything to sort it all out, you know. Yeah. And I don't even know if I want to. But yeah. But the but the purpose of it obviously was just to get ratings, which is well, the and main it's. Thing it's as seems to happen in the media, you know, it spawned another, you know, it then just, the other network picked up on it and then they did. And then they went nuts on it. And then another way. one, you know, and, and. With each untruth getting more untruthful. Yeah. yeah. Because it's everything. Just snowballs. Yeah, it just snowballs as it, so as it does. And kind yeah. of went a bit big. Yeah, we got thousands of emails about like our abusive emails and, you know, people who want to kill us and whatever else. And uh, you know. did, it, did it increase the amount of people interested in the work you were doing? Did Ironically, you? it did. So did you got, did you got I, more people coming here and more people. Well, by yeah. a small amount. But what happened was because once it hit the media, it also hit the media worldwide. Yeah. And, of course, a lot of people worldwide never heard of, heard of Divine Truth, and so they started investigating. Then they realised that all what the media was saying was a heap of crap, really, and, and it was all false. And so then they started watching more, ironically, some of them, you know. But in, in the in the long run, obviously, a lot of people obviously attacked us as well. But mm. uh, that that's what, you know, what... I don't think... I think that happens. all happened at a time where um, there were some people loaning us a venue at the Sunshine Coast as well. And so there was... We were having a lot of people come to talks anyway. At Two to three hundred were coming to talks. Each, so. every fortnight, you know, people mm. just who just hearing about it and listening and mm. um, quite interested... And then that kind of all happened. And then, but then we kind of got, we still get a lot of media inquiries, a lot. But as you know, we have this thing now where we say, well, if you're recording us, we're Scares recording you. Yeah. yeah, we have this ethical, thing, ethical if, thing now where if you're recording us and they're going to say things about us, we're allowed to record you and say things about you. And most media organisations 
have do not like that at all. So I would say every year, you know, there's kind of a season. It must be when people are out looking for new stories or whatever. We get we When's get the season. Oh, I was trying to remember. It's usually it's, prime. You know, when the prime time TV. <laughs> area time is which which is usually winter time isn't it yeah right okay that's when it usually happens uh and then and then summertime it all sort of goes away i reckon in a, in a year we'd get eight to ten six to ten sometimes more than that yeah, like in, in some years we've had like 50 or 60 from overseas are you do usually overseas these days or? Uh, no, no, no. no channel seven still routinely every year contacts really? us yeah, yeah. yeah and I, you, been, okay, uh, you guys are laughing. You're joking. Been tempted right? to, yeah. all right, no. come on. No, I've just said back to them, look, when you're yeah. willing to actually give as much time to the truth about us as you were willing to give and create That's create true. a false story about us, yeah. and you're actually willing to put that on prime time Sunday night, then I'll, then no, then after right. you've done that, I'll talk They're to you. They're not going to go for that. Oh, no. Of course. No. <laughs> so that's why that's why we don't have much media coverage these days because we don't accept It's just not it. worth it. I feel like you got burned and you learned your lesson. Oh, it's not so much I that. Think I felt uh, at the time Mary I got feels burned. That a bit. I was a bit innocent as well. I expected like, it, to be know. frank. Really? What story did you expect? I expected exactly what they did. Well, ironically, I have a, a friend, or well, she probably isn't hung in with me now, but um, Jessica, who works for the ABC and does like the national news on the weekends and stuff, and she was like, Mary, don't talk to these people. They're just going to go for that 30 second grab. Do not do this, you know. And you didn't believe her? I kind of was terrified that it was true and I did put a lot of pressure on you, didn't I? Like, don't do this. Don't engage with them. Don't talk to them. No, no, and no. Mary gets upset. She always puts a lot of pressure yeah. on um, me. But what did I think? The guy, It was the first guy, David, the so-called the minister. The dude. Yeah, he was pretty slimy with me and kind of sort of like made out, no, like I can't say anything bad about you guys. Like you're not ripping people off. I don't know how I'm going to frame this story and all this stuff and I totally believed him. Mm. Um, that was the very first. And Whereas I didn't. I said to Mary, he's telling you lies. But Yeah, you were onto it. You, you can believe him if you want. My, my, my feelings are if someone comes along with a, a request to have an interview well our light just went out i don't know how the guys are going uh, i think i don't it's just it's a battery it's the outside one yeah. it's all right and and uh yeah if you if you um like if you want to know answers to questions that you want to ask me and i'm happy to answer them i'm happy to do it even if i know potentially you might abuse that uh you were all the about giving time, people the, the opportunity. So I'm about, yeah, giving people the opportunity, even though their character would suggest it's potentially that it's probably not going to go that good. Why? Um, because I feel everybody with any character, um, any character needs to be given an opportunity to develop their character in a positive way. And, and I feel the way that you give those opportunities is give an opportunity to a person to to develop the character in a positive way. Or to display ethics. Or, or to display ethics properly. And then if they don't, then they don't. But if they do, then that's great for them and also great for you. But it's also um, this principle of not prejudging a person um, and saying, well, I can't, uh, you know, I know what you've done up until now, so therefore you're you, not with me but with others, so now I'm just going to write you off, yeah. you know. It's, it's about giving everyone an opportunity to make a different choice at every moment because mm. we all do have that choice. But now we just have the form and you you happy to sign the form. Mm. So I, I don't know if we'll continue with the form in the long run. I but initially during this it. period, my feelings are that um, I'm trying to display to people that, no, there's a point of ethics here and that is if you want me to give my time, then you should also be willing to volunteer yours. And if you want me to give you a voice snap of my voice, you should also be willing to give me a voice snap of yours. And if you want Fair to enough. see my likeness on telly, then I should be able to see yours on my productions on YouTube. And that that's sense. And, it, and it's an ethical, to me, it's an ethical point of what is moral and what is ethical. And so I, we give uh, organisations that opportunity and and some organisations, very few, but some do take it up. Like we've had uh, Sky News has taken it up and actually been ethical mm. at one yeah, time. Yeah. 
Um, ITV in the UK was ethical at one time. They didn't fully follow through by giving us a copy, but they do allow us to display their copy that we downloaded from the internet without any trouble. Sure. So, so there are some that have been ethical, yeah. but it's pretty rare. It's yep. Like yep. very rare, actually. I think also, you know, a lot of people, what I've noticed in the media, what we both noticed is that um, a lot of people in the media think that we are very interested in publicity. And so mm. they feel like they're doing us a fate. They approach us, hey, I want to do the story about you. And it's I think be they're very you. used to you, people, <laughs> people going, oh, okay, all right, yeah. And we kind of go, oh, doesn't fit our schedule or actually we're not that interested and yeah, it's yeah. kind of shocking for them. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, because they're angry about that, that they have their opportunity denied, then, of course, they usually go and write something unfavorable. <clears throat> without you. Without you. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that people come to you thinking that um, that you're going to be into it. I approached you guys thinking, like, you know, they're not going to they're not going to want more media. <laughs> it's the last thing they want. They want. But I'm really glad that yeah. you know. I was surprised and thrilled that it's that, like we uh, sort of don't. Mary probably has a feeling that you don't want media. I, I my my that. feelings are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this. My feelings are more along the lines of. To me, the media are just people. They're just people who I would normally meet in my, yeah. uh, that I can normally meet on the street or in my day to day life. And any person who's willing to ask some questions about truth, I'm willing to engage. You, know, you, like, you love, you, I you love, talk to anyone about truth. Yeah, I love discussions. <laughs> yeah. They've got to ask, but then you yeah, I've got to you ask. Go? I'm not going to pester them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going to browbeat them or anything. But yeah. if they want to ask, then I'm happy to have them ask. Um, and fortunately, nowadays, we record a lot of it. So even if none of it gets um, out into the mainstream media or something like that, it. then at least we've got material that we can still display on our YouTube channel. And that, and that does mean that people have the opportunity to see the actual discussion and what we discuss, because quite often it's quite interesting discussions, you know? Yeah. Mm. And, um, and so I, I sort of feel like, well, you know, every one of these things is a, giving a person an opportunity and also having the opportunity to share truth with somebody, which I which I love doing. So, um, for me, I, I I've had to deal with a lot of fear about it in the past, and mm. I've had to go through the emotions that Mary's going through now about it. But I now sort of have got to the point. Well, you know, if you're going to be a leader of change in the world, you've got to be willing to stick your neck out to a degree, and and there's going to be people who want to chop it off. Yes. Uh, as well, because that's what people are like. You know, they don't necessarily like hearing truth. Yeah. And particularly when they've got, when there's a big industry behind it, like a, like if, if you're hearing truth about uh, religion and yet there's a big industry behind religion, then of course you're going to have a fight with somebody who's telling the truth about it. Of course. And, yeah. and the same applies to economics and the same applies to politician, uh, politics so, and the yeah. same applies to the medical industry and so forth and so forth. So... Given the fact that God's truth confronts every area of life, there's a good chance <laughs> mm. that um, sooner or later there's going to be some confrontation with some people. Yeah, yeah. Um, on my part, it's never going to be sort of violently engaged or anything, or and I'm never going to lie about it. But but I can see that other people are willing to, and and there is this general understanding by the public generally that. To tolerate a fair degree of lying in what's portrayed, I think too. Mm. Like this is how politicians sometimes get into power after they've lied, and and mm. and this is how you know well, people are often lied to quite regularly by politicians in particular or by religions, and yet and yet still survive. Survive the religion still survive and the politics still survive. So obviously there's a certain degree of acceptance of lies in yes. in the community, and and that's something I'd like to see change. To yeah. be honest, mm. but. But the only way it's going to change is by having some brave people speak the truth. Um, and yeah. no matter what happens, yeah. that's how I see, see it.